that are using uh, the problem list and electronic health record is, it doesn't give me any information. And, and when I ask why, is it empty? There's nothing on it. No, there's a hundred things on it. it. It's filled with lots of stuff. So you really don't have a snapshot when people are just throwing problems on the problem list. Physicians have to start uh, deduplicating, start doing work on the problem list because it's not accurate and tight and up-to-date and really reflective of the patient's acuity and status today, they get uninvolved with the problem list and the, and the issues just get worse and worse. You might wonder how does a problem list get to that point? How does it get to a point where uh, there are 20 things on the problem list but the patient's essentially fairly healthy? And um, I think of a common scenario where a patient comes in to the emergency department saying that I've had headaches for the last two months. I'll put headache on the problem list, which I think is completely appropriate for the uh, emergency medicine physician uh, to interact with the problem list in this way. Now, a week later, the patient goes for follow-up to his primary care doctor. The primary care doctor maybe does a more thorough investigation, has more time, dealing with fewer issues than, the, than in the emergency room and says, you know what, these aren't really headaches, these are migraines. And then that physician puts migraine on the problem list, uh, interacts with the patient, get, comes up with a plan, patient comes back several months later, uh, headaches are getting worse, migraines are getting worse. So the, maybe the physician says, you know what, you need to see a specialist, we're gonna send you to the child neurologist. Well, the child neurologist sees the patient and says, well, this is not just a migraine, but this is a classic migraine, a specific kind of migraine that requires specific kind of treatment. You can imagine what's going to happen next. That neurologist is going to add classic migraine to the problem list. So now we have headache, migraine, classic migraine, all on the problem list. And that, when someone looks at that, says, they often say, I don't really know what's going on here. I don't have time for this. Um, and they'll start to ignore the problem list. And that's, you're downhill. That's when you start going, going downhill. How could that have been handled? How should that have been handled? Uh, well, uh, in Epic, there's certainly, there's a, a button called Change Diagnosis. And boy, if those physicians would have been using the Change Diagnosis button, assuming that the project team has enabled that button to be there, uh, things would be much better. You could actually then go back and see, oh, well, the emergency room doctor put headache on the problem list, then the uh, pediatrician or family doctor uh, clicked the change diagnosis button and said that's a migraine, and then the neurologist, who had even more information than the other two physicians, changed that diagnosis once again to a classic migraine. So now there's only one problem on that problem list, classic migraine, and if someone wanted to go back and say, well, I wonder how, how did that get on there, you could see, uh, by looking at the appropriate report, the entire progress of that, of that issue, how it started in a generic way and moved into a specific way. I have had physicians tell me, well, that's, uh, I don't want to touch that problem. I don't want to modify that diagnosis because that's not my diagnosis. That's Dr. Smith's diagnosis, and I don't want to offend Dr. Smith. I have to remind physicians that they actually don't have problems on the problem list. That is not Dr. Smith's problem. It's actually the patient's problem. So physicians don't have problems on the problem list. They don't own problems on the problem list. Physicians want to have an up-to-date problem list, and the only way they get that is with uh, other physicians modifying and updating and uh, keeping information as current as possible. Going back in my mind to what information do you want the emergency room physician to know when that patient is rolled up unconscious into their into their uh, trauma bay? Um, that's the that that really is the number one decision that I, that I would use in order to determine if something should go on the problem list or not.